Okay. As far as a personal preference goes, I like to see my trace image at full opacity. So I'm in it, Command J, Control J for Windows. And I'm going to drag the opacity back up. I like to see my trace image at 100% opacity. It's just less distracting for me. If I want to hide these little guys here, I can hit Command I, hides, shows, hides, shows. Again, if you want to put the CSS background here, Command I, hides, shows, hides, shows. If you don't want to see your guides right now, Command semicolon. Okay, so now I want to put the dimensions for my site nav. So site nav, let's think about this. Site nav is going to already have a guide for the bottom of this tag. Now I need to put another guide right here, right about the time that this photo starts here. So the distance between these two is right there, 51 pixels. We're going to make it 50. We're not going to split hairs here. So site nav, in order to affect site nav, I need to select site nav. I put my cursor right there. Now, notice that I can't see my type too well because it's on a dark background. So if it helps you to change your body copy just temporarily to white, that's totally up to you, but I can actually see this pretty simply. But if you want to double click body copy and change your body copy to white just temporarily, you'll be able to see this. Well, actually, I can see it okay here, but not there. So change it to yellow or green or something that makes sense to you. So let's just change this to say maybe, let's compromise here. Let's make this uh, dark orange. Eh, I'm going to keep it black because I can see it. Okay. So you always want to pay attention to wherever you put your cursor. I put my cursor right there. That's the name of the site nav div tag. I want to create a rule for site nav, and that's going to be 50 pixels high. So I select the tag, I make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. In order to affect the tag, I need to select the tag. I come here. Again, site nav inside of branding, that's totally acceptable. Site nav inside of branding, and I'm in OK. So site nav inside of branding, we're going to say the box height is going to be 50 pixels high. Simple, simple, simple. So there's site nav. Okay. Now, again, it's just going from tag to tag to tag. The start of this tag and that tag. So now we're going to do the site tagline. So the site tagline is going to go from point A to point B. Okay. So site tagline, let's zoom out of here, command minus. Now, important step, when I zoom in or zoom out here, it's still going to keep the same dimensions here. It's still going to keep the same pixel height and the same pixel width. So you can command minus, command plus, of course, Windows control minus, control plus. So I can still see my information here. So I'm going to take a guide, and I'm going to put a guide right there. Now I'm going to hold down the command key, and the distance is 404 pixels. Now, again, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to go with 400 pixels. Now, obviously, if your client is so dot the I and cross the T, they make it exactly pixel perfect. But I just want to just share with you the concepts. We're not going to make this a museum piece. I just want to share with you the concepts of how to do this. So this is for the site nav tagline, which is this tag right here. So down at the bottom, I select the tag, I make a rule. In order to affect the tag, I need to select the tag. It could not be simpler than that. In order to affect the tag, I need to select the tag. I come over here and I make a rule for the select the tag. And again, it's going to be site tagline inside the branding tag. That works for me. We're going to change the box height to 400 pixels. Now, this is going to be a photo, so the photo is not going to have any padding here. Now, we can choose, now if you think about this intuitively, okay, we can choose to put this information inside of a separate div tag for a body copy. Now, for search engine purposes, guys, we don't want to make this whole thing a graphic. We want to make this searchable. In fact, here, this is a button that's going to go to a next page, okay? So we could put this, you know, if this is a form, if this is a form for, say, contact us or sign up for a newsletter, this would have to go inside a form tag. Okay, but I'm just keeping this simple. Okay, now we're going to select a tag for main content. 
Now, main content, if I put my cursor right here at the bottom here, remember we deleted the content from main contents. Is that confusing? Okay. I deleted the content from main content. I deleted the text that said main content, which is fine. I'm still going to click main content rule. Now, important step here. If you put a float inside of a div tag, the parent div tag that doesn't have a float is going to collapse on top of itself. So let me explain what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to put this what's new. This what's new has a float. When we created the float, we come up here to create what's new div tag. Not the rules for the div tag. We said the float to the left. So this is what's happening right now. Okay. So we're going to just zoom out of here for a second so I can see the distance between point A and point B. Now, let's think about this very intuitively. Let's look at our design comp. Okay. It appears to me that this distance between point A and point B is the same distance here. So let's make this a little bit wider here. Let's make this, um, let's make this, that size. No, I can't scroll here, so let's just make this. Let's go back to tablet. Then let's change tablet. Let's change the size to 50%. Okay, so now I can scroll here. Okay, so let's look at this for a second. Now, this appears to be of equal width, of equal width. So we could basically make these div tags what? We could make these div tags 33% or 33 and a third, but you can't do a third of a percent. So we can make these div tags be a width of 33%, okay? Now, very, very cool, very slick, very happening production technique here I wanna share with you. My objective here is to create flexible design, flexible design, what do I mean by that? I don't wanna to have to reinvent the wheel. Whatever you do and pay Close attention to this. Whatever you do to the div tag, that's hard coding the div tag. So as an example, if you give the div tag a background color, it's going to be the same color for every single site. If you give the div tag a flow to the right, it's going to flow to the right for every single site. If you give the div tag a width, it's going to be the same width for every single site. However, however, if you put the width, if you put the height, if you put the background color, if you put the foot inside of a class tag, then that div tag can have different appearance. It can have different properties for your different sizes, for your different pages, for your different sites, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Now, I don't want to clutter your head with too much stuff here. But I just want to share with you that class tag applied to a div tag or class tags applied to any tag makes the tag much more flexible. Okay? So let's make our main content tag here. How big? Main content is going to go from point A to point B here. Now I'm having a little bit of a problem with actually seeing this correctly. So I'm going to take a guide and I'm going to put a guide right about there. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to share with you a concept here. So if I hold down the command key, you can see main content is going to be 456 pixels. Let's actually, so don't split hairs here, let's make main content 450 pixels high. So how do I do that? I select main content in order to affect the tag. I need to select the tag again. When you hold down the command key or control key for Windows, it's going to show you the distance between guides, which we're going to make 450 pixels. So I select the tag, I select the main content, tag and I'm going to make it 450 pixels high. Now again, I'm just sharing a concept with you here, okay? Main content, I don't need this wrapper, I just want to say main content. So if I go to box category and I make this 450 pixels high, which I could, and just because I can, I'm just going to change the background color to this, just, uh, just to visually see what's happening, okay? Now, this is 450 pixels high. Now, technically, I didn't have to give it a background. I'm going to delete the background by clicking down here the icon for trash. So now it doesn't have a background. I didn't delete the div tag. I just deleted the background. 
Now, let's look at our CSS styles for a sec and do some housekeeping here. Here's how this should work. Okay. Wrapper is followed by body. Sorry, wrapper is followed by branding. So wrapper is followed by branding logo, followed by branding site nav, followed by branding tagline, followed by main content. So that's how it should be built. Now, what I want to share with you guys is keep this organized. You'll be very ahead of the game if you keep it organized. What do I mean by that? This should basically appear exactly how it was built. So we built a wrapper, then the branding tag, then the logo tag, exactly how it was built, exactly how it should appear. It should appear. The HTML tag should be on top, followed by the class tags, followed by the ID tag, starting with wrapper. Make a change. Save a change. We'll finish out the rest of stylizing these three div texts in our next video.